Hello. Hello, everybody. I hope you're here. Hello, everybody. So you can see how many people are on. That is really good. I wasn't, I didn't somehow realize. I guess I'm not used to being on the other side of this. But Vicki, you are amazing. Good job, darling. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been watching, um, I've been watching Alex Anderson and Ricky Thames, and they haven't been showing the live chat. And I kind of like seeing the live chat. So I hope people will be coming today. I'm wondering, oh, I see the Internet's acting a little odd. So, anyway, hello, how are you? I'm hoping, I want to make sure I'm on the right thing. We should be on the right thing. So let me just real quickly check something. But it is so good to see you. Whoops. Okay. So, I have a few things to show you. I was rushing along, trying so hard to get a, a piece done for you guys. And in the good, it is on the right thing. So good. Glad to know. So anyway, I was rushing around, trying so hard to get a piece finished. And my machine acted up. And I thought, wouldn't you know it, right before I'm supposed to go on live. And I really wanted to finish it. Well, hello, everybody. Looks good and sounds good. Excellent. Thank you so much. Mark really bailed me out. I tell you what, I can't count the number of times he has bailed me out. So, Cheryl, hello. Kathy Klein. That's a new one. So welcome here. So good to see you. So I was working on trying to finish my sun and moon. Do you remember my sun and moon I've been working on? I was trying to finish my border on it. And my machine started acting up. Well, I didn't want to be too late trying to fix it and then finish that. So what I did is said, well, I think we'll do a little online um, show you how I clean my machine, just in case, you know, not everybody knows how to clean a sewing machine, and I thought I would show you how I do it, and once again, I'm trying to straighten up a little bit, I was so, I get so focused, I am, hi Patricia Fry, I am easily distractible, but the flip side of that is when I do concentrate, I can concentrate so much that I don't always like stop and go, Deb, you've got to be online in five minutes. So you better finish, <laughs> finish getting ready so you can be re online. So it is so good to see you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I clean my sewing machine. So this, and then I will, I can't wait. Hi, Marsha. I can't wait to show you my sun and moon because I'm really, really happy with it. And I want to show you, I have now proclaimed that Mark is my official colorist. Yep, he's official because he's so much better at colors and knowing what to put on what to put on a quilt, what colors go best together. I'm sticking with him, let me tell you. So even though I made the artwork, I said, Mark, could you help me pick out a border fabric for it? So I'll show you that. And I also want to show you how I boarded it because I didn't want to, I didn't want to take a lot of time and I just wanted it to be done. Okay, so let me turn my camera down and... Do I make my own clothes? I used to make my own clothes, but what I have done, I'll go ahead and, and share it with you. I have found two online mail catalogs because I'm a big girl. So it's sometimes, you know, I, I just got to where I couldn't find anything at Walmart. I hate shopping. I hate going into a store. I hate trying stuff on. And I found a catalog called Woman Within. 
And there's a sister catalog to that called Romans. And Woman Within is more casual. Roman is more dress up and a little more expensive. Um, but what I do is I use their sales to my advantage. And I try never to pay more than $15 for a shirt if I can, $25 at the most if it's something I really love. But they have a lot of sales. And they have things where you can sign up and save 40% on an item. And you just have to get savvy. And understand that sometimes when they say you save a certain percentage on an item, it's the retail price, which it hardly ever is the retail price. But if you get those catalogs, um, you just wait for really good sales. A lot of times at the end of a season, I can, I can get things. But I used to make my clothes. And honestly, now that I have been getting them from Women Within and Romans, I've been so happy. So a lot of times I'm finding the fabric is a little thin and cheap, but what I, for what I do and that I only, you know, I don't dress up like this normally. And so it gives me a chance to, if I just wear them for a couple of hours, I try to take good care of them. So, but thanks for asking that question. You know, I used to just do catch as catch can. And the thing that now, it, it makes me feel better to have certain clothes that I can switch into. And so I'm very blessed. I'm very, very blessed. And I just use sales to my advantage everywhere I can. And so, but those are the two best places that I have found. Let me show you how to clean out the machine. Okay. I'm going to turn this around. All right. So I was sewing along, and I noticed, let me see if I can find it here on this. I was, I was stitching here, and all of a sudden, the thread started catching and spooling up underneath. And I didn't want that to happen oh it probably did because i ran out of that thread poo i that was i was trying to make that it was a dark purple i was trying to make it last because that's the only bit i have of it i have had this spool of thread for 25 30 years when i used to work at the museum somebody came by and said would you like any of this stuff and I took it because it gave me so many different colors okay so number one that was one problem so now I'm going to come in here with another dark purple oh, let me see I think I see one more that might be a little better hold on just a second guys this let me see No, nope, that's too light. I'm going to have to go with this dark purple. And this, as you can see, doesn't have that much on it. My thread used to last a lot longer in the past, but now I'm so busy doing so many things. Okay, before I thread this, I'm going to show you what I do to clean a machine. Okay, I come up with the brush and... Because I this machine will not open this part. This is my Juki. So I just get up in here the best I can. See how you can kind of stick that brush right up in there. And get out all the dust. Look at that brush now. That caught a lot of dust. Because understand, you don't want any dust any, anywhere in your thread line. Because that will get in between some of your um, your tension disc. If dust gets in your tension disc, if it gets tangled up in your thread, you will have a mess. Plus, it's good to keep that light bulb clean. So there I have gotten three brushes full of dust out of there. So... This is the first thing I do when I clean my machine is go start at the top, you know, just like cleaning most other things, because then this dust will end up falling down onto 
the deck. So now I'm ready to clean my bobbin casing, okay? So I get the screwdriver. Now people don't want to do this. It seems like too much trouble. You must do this. And actually some people clean out their bobbin area, you know, every every bobbin change. Well, I'm not quite that fanatical about it. And uh but I would say take this off and clean out your bobbin area every new project. Okay. Hi, Debbie. What's wrong? You're sick in bed. Oh, bronchitis for weeks. Oh, honey. You take good care of yourself. We don't want you sick. And you know, something like that bronchitis, you just have to really take good care of yourself because if you don't, this, this, that um, screwdriver is too long. Let me come up here. I used to have a very short screwdriver. I'm wondering where it is. Let me see. I don't know where my short screwdriver is. I always keep it here. Hmm. Okay. I am not sure what I did with my short screwdriver. Darn. All right, let me try my best to get this screw out of here. Ugh. Honest to goodness. I will find something. Hold on just a second. Technical difficulties. All right. Finally broke that screw loose. What I ended up doing is using a stiff paper clip to break that screw loose. So, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Here we go. Make sure you put those screws somewhere you know you won't lose them. All right. I'm going to, when I was wondering what was wrong with my sewing, I didn't realize my thread had run out, but I noticed these were sticking out of the bobbin case. So, sure enough, what these are, is these are threads that have gotten tangled in the thread cutter. So, look at that. Now, you know that's not good for running your machine. So, I got those out. And now what I'm going to do, there's one thing you should never, ever, ever, ever do. Don't ever blow inside your sewing machine ever never never blow in there because that will force the dust down in this housing and there have been sewing machine repair people who have pulled out i mean it was so much lint and dust in there it was keeping the machine from turning so um, no, I, well, it's a good idea to take your presser foot off. I don't have my foot near it, but, um, anyway, I, but yeah, don't, and when you're cleaning this, they, the instructions probably say, turn off your machine. Well, I like the light left on, but yeah, if you want to unplug your presser foot, just to make sure you don't accidentally, oh, but look, you see this so far? Now that's just the start. You wait. Because I have been using this machine a lot. Look at this. And I love this brush. I, I'm trying to remember where I bought it. It probably was connecting threads. 
it might have been Tooltron, but this is my favorite brush. They have these little tiny things that often come with the machines, and they're not worth much. I mean, truly. And see, by keeping this clean, it'll make my thread cutter work better. But I have got gotten quite a bit of dirt out, and I'm not finished. So what I do is take this brush, stick it down in here like this, going back and forth to pick up, look at that, pick up any kind of stray dust. Now I'm showing you this way. There is something else I use. I'll show you in a minute. But I wanted to make sure to show you if all you have is a brush. Now let's say you don't have a very good sewing machine brush. Look at this. Is that a lot of stuff or what? So if you don't have a good sewing machine brush like this one here, then go get a paint brush and use a small paint brush with good soft bristles and use that. But see how I, I really work it in the hole and kind of jab at it so the dust gets stuck in the hairs. Yeah, pipe cleaners are great things to use. So, yeah, it's so important. People don't realize how important. And go work it in every which way you can. Never use kid air in your sewing machine, ever. You do not want to push those threads and that lint, lint back into the machine and get it into the working here. So, I think I've done a pretty good job. I come in from every angle and push it in every little crevice, just knowing that that dust can stick in those bristles easily. Like, see how I'm sticking it down in here? You go in every, every place. So, and make sure you clean this, the bobbin chase. And then make sure you clean this out really good. Now, and underneath, really good. Oh, my goodness. I just got all of this dust from the bottom of this. Look at that. So, now, what I do, I keep this normally up by my... Now, this machine doesn't call for any oiling. Just calls for keeping it very clean. But I love this machine, so I shouldn't have let it get as dirty as it did. And then, if you're worried about your bobbin tension, you, it's, you can take a thread and you can run it under. See, this is, that, this is the little metal piece that when you normally load your bobbin, it run, the thread runs under there. It can be good to run a piece of thread under it and make sure it's clean. Sometimes if you have lint, this is a tensioner for the bobbin. And you want to run that through, make sure there's no tension under there. Now, if you have one of the silver bobbin holders you hold in your hand, there's a tension guide there too. And just run a thread under it like you would flossing your teeth and make sure there's no lint in between any tension discs or any, any two places where the metal comes close together. So now I can run this, but let me, let, oops, let me take this back out. I want to show you one more thing. Years ago, I bought this shark um, handheld vacuum cleaner and it is wonderful and then I can use this now I'm going to move those screws out of the way the good thing is the shark has a little basket so if I were to suck up the screws I could get them back but I don't want to do that but I can then go in here and vacuum everywhere I can see Vacuum up here.
what I'm doing right now is, well, let me do this. What I'm doing right now is, since I can't open this, putting the vacuum, whoops, putting the vacuum to the little slip here where I run the thread, seeing if it wants to pick up any of this. Any, especially where you have any gauges or distensioning, it's good to vacuum. All right. But I love this little thing. It's really powerful. And I've got, I've even got upstairs, I've got um, a little vacuum set that you like you use for a computer to clean it out. And that gets in the crevices really good. So now let me show you my bobbin area. Do you see how nice and clean that is? That's what you want. It's the best thing you can do for it's the best thing you can do for your machine but you just keep everything clean everything clean and if you take care of your machine i know it sounds corny but it will take care of you so now i can put these things back on before i put this bobbin in i'm going to go ahead and put the throw plate back on whoops hold on i know how to do this <laughs> all right Ah, uh, see, it has a nice little arrow here. That helps. So now I put this on and put my screws back in. It's important to have these screws in place because, and you notice I had to put the little bobbin holder in before I put this plate on. And, you know, it's a good thing also to take a clean cloth every so often and wipe down your machine. I'll show you that in just a moment. Especially if you have touch screens, get any finger oils off of that. Now to tighten. You know, you don't tighten fully down any screw until all the screws are at least partially tightened because otherwise you can get your plate slightly wonky and that doesn't work. So now since I don't know where my short little screwdriver is, I'm going to go back to my handy dandy paper clip and tighten that. You want to have you want to firmly tighten them. You know, don't go bonkers because you have to go to get them back off. But you don't want this ever getting loose and moving because you could really mess up your machine. Now I'll put my bobbin back in and run the thread. Okay. And then I'm going to take this part of the clear bobbin case and clean that. All right, so now I'm done with the brush. I've cleaned it off. I'll put that back. And now I'm just going to take a clean rag. Now, it'd be nice if it had a little warm water on it, but I'm not near a sink. But I'm going to take and just clean it up. Clean up the machine. All right. And that way, because, you know, you could get, you could, with the thread being up here, you can get lint and all up in this. So just clean it good. And then now I'm done. So you could do this. Hi, Michelle Lang. You can do this. You know, at least every project, do this to your machine. Give her a little spa treatment at home. But it doesn't take but 15 minutes. And I bet you now it's going to work so much better. But it's not good. Whoops, sorry. I was getting lint off the microphone. I got my microphone linty doing that. Let me see. No, nope, let me see. I want to see if my... Sometimes you have to adjust the little wire in your automatic thread needle threader. Let me see if this will... Aha, it works. Okay. So now 
And I pull that through. Okay. And if your tension ever acts up too much, then get your thread, pull it in and out through the tension to just make sure that you don't have any lint in your tension discs. So, there we go. I just thought I would just show you. Now, this is, this is my Juki. It's the one I take to classes and things. The reason it's here is because I was doing some freehand domestic quilting, and my Elna is not real fond of doing that freehand domestic quilting. And so I brought in, let me get this, whoops, we tried to tighten it, but it's a little tricky. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make a lamp arm act as a camera boom. <laughs> so, but anyway, I was down here this morning. This is what I wanted to share with you. It was really a revelation, okay? I was down here doing, I was down here doing my freehand quilting. And I've always told you I'm horrible at domestic machine quilting. And I mean, I just feel like a ninny trying to do it. So what I wanted to tell you was that I found you need to speed up your machine if you want to do smoother. I was following, let me show you right here. Let me show you. I was following, trying to outline these little, whoops, hold on one second. Okay. I was trying to outline these little tiny things. Oh, you're so sweet, Vicki. And I was trying to stay straight around these areas, you know, where it's smooth. And I'm holding it and doing this. What I thought is I should be doing them slowly and stitching slowly. That was all wrong. When I stitched too slowly, when I had the machine running too slowly, it made them herky-jerky. What I was supposed to do... Yes! Oh, thanks! And what I was supposed to do was speed up my sewing. By taking tinier stitches, you can make smoother curves. And so when I started doing it that way, this was the last trail of beading that I quilted around. And I am so happy with it. It's so much better than what I was doing before. Now let me look. One second, everybody. I want to find this design for you. I had it listed a couple weeks ago. And let me see. Hold on just a second, guys. I'm going to go find it for you. But um, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, uh, that's a good idea, Michelle. It probably keeps you calm, relaxed, and even tempered. I was so surprised that when I just sped up the stitching, everything was so much smoother. So I said I would get ready to start, and I'd say, get the machine to speed first, then I would start moving. <laughs> that is so cute. That so Okay, hold on just a second, but I'm going to tell you all about this wall hanging because I am tickled with it. I'm really, really tickled. Let me find where, hold on one second. I want to look, the woman gave me her permission. Her name is Maria, Maria, and she's from Happy Family Art. And let me see if I can go real quick and find her website. Really pleased that she let me use this design. Happy, fa oh, here it is. Happily fam happyfamilyart.com. And let's see. Okay. 
let me show you the front page of it, and I will then write down. It's happily happy family art dot com, and very talented lady, and she has coloring pages. Okay. And this was a coloring page. So she's an artist who draws coloring pages. And she's got amazing, amazing coloring pages. And I'll show you which one it was. Okay. Here is, and, and it was free for me to download. Now, even though it was free, I still give give credit where credit's due. I also asked her permission if I could recreate it here on our channel. And she said, absolutely. And so I'm going to make sure that, um, let me get the, let me type, I mean, copy this email address so you can, if you and check out her other designs, they're amazing. And she has a certain number of free designs that you can download and use for free. How nice is that? But please, I wanted to pass along her information because what a lovely, lovely lady. All right, here we go. There is a link to her website. And her name is Maria. Let me get her last name again, please. One second. So how is everybody doing? Cavalio. Okay. Maria I believe, whoops, let me make sure about her name. Hold on, guys. So, Koval, Y-O-V, K-O-V-A-L-Y-O-V, okay? I didn't get it right, whoops. All right, I think I got this right this time. And she's with happyfamilyart.com. So thank you, thank you to her because I wanted to you I wanted to make something to practice with the Jacquard um, Dynaflow dies and the Jacquard Lumiere metallic dies. And I am so happy with how this came out. I am so, so happy. And I did different trials, different colors. I went over and over parts of it to get the right shading and the right metallic. Like those stars really shine. I am thrilled with this. And it, this is a keeper. This is a keeper. So I, I think this one is really, and I just did this up as a little, a little quick template to try out the painting. And it's turned into a piece of art now that I'm going to treasure. So anyway, I was trying to figure out, okay, so it's the sun and the moon. And like the moon, I had to try different times to try, uh, try and get the right color for the moon. And using the colors, I only had nine colors. Um, and it's like using them and mi mixing them and matching them. And I even brought in, I'll give you a hint, if you want to do painting with these. Um, I, I just had these starter kits, the little exciter kits. If you want to do these, you're going to probably have to get some white um, acrylic paint, like the little bottles. 
because there were times I need to lighten stuff. And, um, but like for the moon, I wanted a violet turquoise greenish color for the moon. But I wanted the, the sun to be the hot colors, red, orange, yellow. I wanted the moon to be the cool colors, which are blue, green, some violet. So that is that. You want to see the back too? I'll show you the back, but I haven't trimmed threads yet. <laughs> oh, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. <laughs> okay, here's the back. Now, what I did is I quilted it before I painted it. Mo mostly. There were some parts I started painting before. Here's where I quilted today with the black. I on the rest of it I did a gray bobbin thread. Today I forgot and did black bobbin thread. So it really shows up. But I need to do some trimming. But it'll also show you just how much quilting I did. And I will end up neatening and tidying those threads. And I wish I had done it in actually I did a gray green before so it doesn't really show up except if I've done it in real heavy areas but um, anyway it it's coming along beautifully it's almost done oops I had to trim off my signature and one thing I want you to do let me see if I brought it up um no nope. I am going to make sure to get my Micron pen and I'm going to sign my name on this like a piece of art because my hair is doing all kinds of funny things back here. <laughs> but um, anyway, I am going to make sure that I sign this. And then usually after I do, I finish everything, then what I'll do is sit down in the evening and cut off all the loose threads. Now, what I'm doing right now, and is there anything y'all need to ask questions about? And please, oh, thank you. Diane57 is here. I don't know where my Susan is, but I'm hoping she's doing something fun. I hope she's not ill because Susan works so hard. So anyway, okay. Um, she might be just needing a day off, and I wouldn't blame her. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is finish this binding slash border. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm like a little kid. I see this shining in the, in the camera, and it's bothering me. <laughs> so, um, but hold on. Let me just get that knocked down back there just a little. Driving me nuts. See, I tell you, little things distract me. I'm going to show you how I'm finishing this. I wanted something wider than a binding but not as wide as a border so we just figured a narrow border that would act as binding so i cut out mark found this of course it's jenny buyer fabric it's from her milan line and it is a blue and and pinky purple and i found it really brings out the other pinky purples in the quilt now what I did, I'll show you right here. So I cut out five, three and a half inch. I cut out five, three and a half inch wide pieces for this. And I sewed a quarter of an inch seam along here first. And I needed, I, I had trimmed this up. I squared this quilt up on my, I squared it up on my cutting mat with a long ruler. Then I said, oops, what do I do about not having um, batting for the border? So then what I did is I came along, I cut a one and a half inch strip of batting. And then I came along here before I had this on, I came along and zigzag the batting to this, to the body of the quilt. Then I took and sewed this on with a quarter inch or less seam allowance. 
then and also I starch this border. I'm a huge believer in when you want something to work out really well, starch it because it really gives body and crispness to fabric so that you can get a nice, neat, tidy finish. So when I once I starched it, I folded it under approximately a quarter of an inch and pressed it. And look how good that press is holding because I starched it. Now I come over to this side and I'm feeling on the front, I'm going to machine sew this on. And normally I don't do it because normally I'm no good at it. I know that Eleanor Burns does it this way. And I admire Eleanor Burns, but I'm normally no good at this. So I'm trying to take it slow and carefully. And I wouldn't even attempt a, a whole long quilt. But for this, I'm going to try. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure I can feel where the edge is that I'm going to do the blind hem stitch. And I don't want this too far over that. I want it to be as close to the edge as possible, but still make sure I get the... Because I'll be sewing it from this side in the ditch. So I've got to be assured that I'm going to catch this because it's hard. There have been some places where I didn't quite catch it. I'm going to have to go back in and fix that. If I don't want to tear it out and do it again by machine, I can just sit and do a little slip stitch in the evening when I'm watching television. So here are my other pins that I had on here. Just making sure that I've come farther than this little seam right there so that when I stitch in the ditch it'll fall just where I want it to fall but I don't want it to be so much that on the inside it looks sloppy have you ever seen where they sew on the front and then you have a whole big piece like this no I want to get as close to that edge as I can all right so now I have it pinned first thing I'm going to do if you see this border right here I, it's got the batting in it, and I wanted to make it kind of look like a picture frame, and I like that. So I'm going to continue to do that here. I've already sewn in the ditch now, and I've sewn along the outer. I've sewn along the outer. Now I'm going to do right here in the middle. So I'm just watching where my foot, oops. Something. Oh, I see what I did. Hold on. I got a mess up here. When I was cleaning, I got a mess. Oh, let's see. I'm going to try this. I accidentally cut the thread. And I don't want to have to re-thread it. So I'm going to, sometimes if you put your threads together and tie them into a knot as one, then you slip it down, you give it a little bit of a tug. It's kind of, it's a, a, one of the ways sometimes when they're winding spools of yarn, they kind of attach them so they can keep winding. But. All right, so then let me wind this back up, put it on here, and I'm going to show you how I, it's very easy. So far, I'm really enjoying the way I'm doing this binding slash border. All right. Oops, what is going on? I am... I wonder if I missed something when I threaded it. So I'm going to have to thread it and re-thread it anyway. Okay, let's see what I've got. Oh, look at this. I have a feeling I missed one of my tension things. This, this is what you call a bird's nest or a mess. <laughs> so let me cut. I'm going to cut this off. You don't want to leave it on and stitch over it. It's just too messy. So, I'm cutting that off. All right. 
I'm going to re-thread this machine and see what I did wrong. Okay. Whoops, that was the bobbin. This is definitely reality. <laughs> This is not a fancy, and plus, I like you to see what I actually do. I don't want to edit this out because I feel like if I have these problems, then somebody else is probably going to have these problems too, and so I feel like, you know, I can show you how, how I did something and how it worked or didn't work, and you can decide what to do from there. But this is definite reality. Because so many times I watch so, uh, somebody do a certain skill and I think, well, it didn't work that way for me. So what were they doing I didn't do? So if I can show you the whole thing, then you'll see. Now, I worry that what was happening just then is I didn't have it fully in this little looper arm. And if, boy, if you miss that looper arm, it will always turn into bird's nest. So let me try this again. Okay. Pulling any loose stitches, getting these off. All right, let's try this again. I start about five or six stitches before where I quit last time. Aha! It's doing fine. So I think that's exactly what happened. I didn't get it in the looper arm. And that's why it turned into a mess. Okay. My foot pedal is going very slow. And I've got it on a non-skid board. But I think... Uh-oh. Okay. Let me see. Oh, no, my thread broke. I have a feeling where I had that knot made it break, so it didn't work this time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, let me make sure I get through the loop arm. All right. Okay. Yeah, the thread. Let me cut this extra thread off. I think that's exactly what happened. That knot that I tried didn't work. Okay. Oops. Oops. All right. Here we go again. Stop right here at, I stop right at the miter, because that way I can then, when I start the next side, I'll be ready. So, let me trim off these back threads. All right, so now I'm going to show you stitching at the ditch. Oh, no, he brought, he brought you a lump of dirt from the outside. Oh, he's like, Mama, get out of bed. Uh, I hope you feel better soon, Debbie. Gosh, that scares me. Bronchitis with, I don't know if you have asthma or have scarred lungs, but bronchitis can be a real mess for me. Now I'm going to stitch in the ditch. And just get as close as you can, right to that edge where those two fabrics are sewn together. Okay? And once you get your eye on that, and you're using your hand just to help keep the fabric feeding in straight. Then when you get close to a pin, slow it down. You don't want to sew over a pin. And I saw the other day, because I remember Alex Anderson way back 20 years ago telling us about how that she broke her machine. Um doing oh, it looks like it did pretty good looks like it did pretty good all right so i caught all of the edge and now i pull my pins out 
But anyway, so as you see, what this is, is it's a folded over. It's kind of like a very wide um, binding. But it's acting as a binding. So now what I'm going to do is I already know from doing this little outer stripe before that I run it, I measure it by running it very close to, well, you can't quite see it, but it's very close to here, okay? So now I just feed, feed my fabric through, trying to keep it very straight, keeping my eye right here. That's why sometimes I'm not aware that I've run out of thread because I'm watching right here where it feeds past this foot to make sure it stays in line. All right, go to that miter, stop. Then I come along, go back up here to this miter. Put my foot down. This has a little, it's almost the same spot as from the edge here. This one's a lot easier to do because it's already got a nice flat path from the previous. So, all right. So now you see how I add this border, and I, I think it looks pretty, pretty darn cool. Myself, and it's easy. It's all machine done, and um. So you saw how I added the border, the, the little strips of batting, and I zigzagged them onto the body of the quilt because I knew you can't have a border binding without batting in it. It's got to be the same consistency as the quilt. And then I, that way I knew I'd have, it would make really cool creases to look like a frame because that's what I wanted it to be. So we went over the first fabric that I wanted to do this for this border. I brought up a brightly colored print of ginkgo leaves. And it was like pastel ginkgo leaves. And I brought it up and I said, Mark, what do you think of that for my border? And he said, I don't like it. He said, it's too busy. It's like takes away from the quilt. So I was like, oh, you know, it always kind of feels a little bit like, oh. <laughs> and, but I sat and thought about it. And I thought, well, yeah. And I thought, okay, what are these? These are supposed to be the sun and the moon. So maybe you could go down and look for some of your sky or outer space type fabric. And that'll tie it in with the celestial kind of thing. And so then I found a black with bright blue dots on it. I thought, that'll do it. So I finally said, Mark, would you come and help me with this fabric choice? So he looked through all of the fabrics I have to do my galaxy and outer space quilts. He said, I don't like any of these. So then he turns around to my closet Thank goodness my fabric is now wound on those mini comic boards because it makes it so easy. He just pulled the basket forward. It's got everything stacked nice and neat. We pulled out probably four or five that we thought would work. And then finally he found this one. And believe it or not, when you look at this pattern, it kind of looks like clouds. And I'm not sure how much you can see because that's really bright. But it kind of looks like clouds. But when we laid it on there, you know, you know, we just, we kept laying things against it and we knew. And I'm so glad I need to, I can make a quilt, but choosing the right colors and the right fabrics and not overloading it with prints, that's where I have problems. And if you have that in your life, if you do one thing really well, but then the other thing not so well, find someone you can trust and say, hey, could you help me with this? And, um, and, and don't get your feelings hurt and you don't have to take their advice. But just listen and think about it. Because, you know, I made that recent prose quilt, the mandala quilt. 
I do wish I had put more white fabric in it. It's a little busy. I love it, but it's a little busy. So sometimes, again, if I hadn't been in such a hurry and really stood back with a critical eye, that's the key. Look at your quilts with a critical eye. Speaking of critical eye, hold on just a second. Here's our beautiful quilts from Cheryl Lemon and Nadine. And on the back of this is my undersea quilt. And we're going to finish this, I promise, by this week. I wanted to finish it last week, but you know what? I was still enjoying it. And I've fallen in love with that quilt. So, but what I was, I'm torn. I have made a very lush and verdant undersea reef. But I don't know if any reef is that busy. So what I've got to decide is the last few things I want to add. Are they going to really add to it or are they going to take away? And if they don't add to it, I don't want to do it. So... It's, it's a tricky balance, and this is why design walls are so important. Take your time. Get back away from your quilt. Look at it from different angles and from different distances and see if it needs something or does it need something taken away. So I'm still at that stage with this. I think I'm going to shorten some of the height on it. I'm not sure, but I'm still, you know, that's what I'm kind of doing. So, but it's got an awful lot on that quilt. I mean, it's an undersea world like you wouldn't believe. And uh, I'm thinking I might have a little too much on there. So I, I'm working on that right now. So... Ah, gotcha. And well, actually, it's my Mark. Um, my sweetheart, Mark, is my, he's my color person. But isn't it wonderful, Vicki, having a color person that's there to kind of say, you know, and he also will help me with, you know, I sometimes think if a little bit's good, then more is better and it's not. <laughs> so he helps me with that kind of stuff, too. All right. So I wanted to show you another thing. I did this one about 10 years ago, and I did it in an ugly fabric contest. Okay, an ugly fabric contest. And let me find the ugly fabric for you. See this green and orange fabric right there? That's the ugly fabric that I was given. And you know what Bonnie Hunter says. If the fabric is still ugly, you haven't cut it small enough. So that's what you do with ugly fabric. With my ugly fabric, I made this with it. And so I kind of think now I've got a collection here. <laughs> but, and with this one, I did some pastels, some color work on it. But this was all... This is, it's funny, this was an early form of my collage quilting that I love so much now. This was all with fabrics with just some, a little bit on his eyes, nose, and mouth, the paint, but the rest is letting the fabric speak for it. I think I did win. <laughs> So it got to the point when I was running my group, I realized I had to stop entering my own contest because it really wasn't fair. And that's when I first said, well, maybe I've got to go on to the bigger stage. And I'm, I'm excited about entering more quilts and shows. But anyway, so I really like this. I, I, I loved all the different fabrics I chose. And... Um, so I just feel like now, you know, it's kind of nice sometimes to do a collection. But I want to thank Maria of Happy Family Art for letting me use her artwork to make this happen. And I think it's exquisite. All I did was paint it and bring it to life. She 
was the true artist in drawing that beautiful design. So please visit her site. Check out some of her coloring pages. It's a great way to start an art quilt and get your different forms of media that you're going to use on it, whether it's Dynaflow from Jacquard, Lumiere, their metallic paints. Now, the, the dye... The dies, I used the die for the background. This was just a simple piece of scrap fabric. This was just a white piece of scrap fabric. And what I did is use the Dynaflow, just the, the, the die thinned with water to do the background. And But where I did use the metallics, it is thick and it's, you know, it leaves a hand, a heavy hand on it. Where you use the dyes, it's pretty much the same as the fabric was beforehand. But this is an art quilt, so I don't need to worry if part of it is at all rough or whatever. And I, I, like I say, I squared it up on my cutting mat, and it worked really well. So once I finished this last side of this and cut my excess threads, it's done. And I think it needs to go on the wall. I hope you agree. So, I love that. All right. So now, let me catch up with what y'all are doing. Yeah, I've got a tiger quilt that I started back last fall when I had been doing some dyeing of fabric. And I did a, tig a batik tiger. I would love to get back to that and see about entering that. And you know... I think I might want to enter my flamingos in a show. So I've got to get busy with those. So, okay, let's see. Oh, I know. Aren't, isn't Sunday? Oh, they would like the sun, wouldn't they? Mm. Okay, I have to think of that. Thank you. I love that show. You've got very good taste. All right. So how are you doing, Marsha? All right. So now... What I'm going to do is, I thought I would do some more tissue dyeing. Remember when I did that a couple weeks ago? So, let me, there's a couple little things I need to grab. Also, I wanted to show you, Diana Wright made me that pouch down there that I keep my scissors in. And that, that's a real winner because... I pile so much stuff here when I'm working that I always lose my scissors. So thank you, Diana, for that pouch. Now I always know where a pair of scissors is. Thank you. All right. So what I'm going to do really quickly, I took regular white fabric, okay? Um, I know if I'd had more time, I could have found my prepared for dyeing fabric which is just fabric without the sizing and chemicals they put on it at the end to make it look pretty and have a good hand. So I quickly, at about 2 o'clock, said, oh, I need white fabric if I'm going to do more tissue dyeing. So I took it in the sink, and I washed it with the Blue Dawn. That stuff's great. And the Blue Dawn um, dish detergent. And then we put it in the dryer real quick so I could have it ready for this. And um, I need to find my spray bottle. So give me one second, okay? I found it. All right, so I have this. And I have this. This is the Spectra Art Tissue. It's called Bleeding Art Tissue, Spectra Art Tissue. I ordered this off of Amazon. Okay. All right, but let me fill my spray bottle because I found this is perfect for tissue dyeing. Perfect. 
if you don't drop it in a trash can. <laughs> All right. I am tickled with this tissue dyeing because you don't have to have the big vat of dye. You don't have to be mixing anything, and it's easy to play with. Oh, just one more thing. With the jacquard dyes that I used, I forgot to tell you this. What I did is I laid the work face down, paint side down, or dye, it's really dye slash paint. Laid it down on a cloth, a cloth that you don't care about, and ironed it from the back. And that was to heat set the colors. Because I don't plan on washing that quilt, but you never know if something spills on it, you might be washing it. So just remember that you need to heat set most colors that you're going to add to a quilt. Okay. I just want to get the major get the major wrinkles out of here. Oh, I forgot to get a work board. All right. Let me grab a board to work on just a moment. Here, here we go. All right. All right, what I have found is it's, I'm using the same board that I worked on last time, and it's just a cheap poster board, and I'm just trying to iron it so it'll flatten out, but I'm not sure it will. Okay, so now and it's sitting on top of a, of a foam core board. All right. I'm going to cut this. Let me see. What size do I feel like working with? Love tearing fabric. Love it. All right. So I'll say about to right here. Okay, let me do something for just a, in just a minute. All right, there we go. Let me let me see where. How far can I move this? Well, we don't want it in front of it. All right, shed some light on this subject here. All right, so now I've got this. You don't have to have your fabric ironed, like I said, but it just came out a little over-dried, which left it a little crinkly. All right. I'm going to pull these out, and you've got to be really careful with these. The moment they, the water hits them, that's it. So you have to be careful, people. Whoops, is it holding all right, so I am going to do something a little different on this one. I'm going to get, oh, three different greens. Actually, four counting this. That's neat. I'm going to cut good-sized pieces of this. And this I got from, like I said, I got it off of Amazon, and it maybe was ten to fifteen dollars. It wasn't that expensive. I got it for myself for Christmas because I love getting things to play and discover with. So I'm gonna get some greens. Now I guess the white bleeds too. I haven't tried that. 
but I'm going to put those over there. And then I'm going to get, ooh, pretty. They've got several different blues. So let me find my scissors again. Okay. Whoops. I just realized, like, okay, here we go. All right, Vicki, take good care, sweetheart. And then I'm going to pick out a couple different sunset colors. So these don't have to be that big. So now I'm going to cut these out. Okay, and what I'm going to try to do is this. We'll see how I do. But this, remember, it's just playtime. So, no worries at all. Let me get a thin little strip of this. Now, there's two sides to this bleeding tissue paper. There is... A very shiny side and a less shiny side. The less shiny side pl goes placed down on your fabric. Okay? But what I'm going to do is try to just do landscape type colors. Now let me make sure I check. Because see, one side, the real shiny side, is the paper itself. The less shiny side is where it has the actual dyes, the dye colors. So let me see. I'll put that there. Okay. Let's see. Making sure I put the not so shiny side down first and what i'm doing is trying to layer this on so i get a graduated a graduated dye then where this sky begins right here will be very dark and i will work myself up to a lighter to the lightest sky all right, I think that's pretty good. Well, maybe, let me see. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but this is what I wanted to do with y'all today. Let me try this again. This is what I wanted to do with y'all today. So let's see how it goes. You start with the darker blue. The sky gets lighter as you go up. That's really shiny. That's less shiny. Let's try this here. And then I'm hoping, if not, lick your finger and see how it works. <laughs> I'm hoping, oh boy, come on. I don't know. I'm going to lay it here and see what happens. All right, so you lay these here, and then you just come along with your water bottle, and you just saturate them. And I thought, okay, I know I can put a bunch of scraps of color on here. Can I make my own dyed fabric that has a landscape look to it? Let's see if it's working. Hold on. Whoops. I might have had this piece upside down. Let me try this again. Mmm. I laid it on the green, unfortunately. Oh, I'll have a little green in my sky. 
You know what? I think I put all of them on upside down. Darn it. Okay, we've got, I've got to look better at see what side is what. So now I'm carefully trying to turn these over. I thought I had the right side, but I need to, I need to find out. Okay. So now let me lay these back out. I know the die works. <laughs> oh, no. But it's still affordable. Darn. You know, it seems to work that way. It's like they maybe put things out at a good price, and as soon as they start getting orders, they raise the price. So, and you see how the die comes off, so you're left with a very translucent product. You know, I think it's better if you use it in little pieces because I turned it over, but I'm not I'm not sure I had it on the wrong side after all. So I wanted to try and see how yeah, see how it's not really doing that much better. Now I'm gonna turn it back over and see. I think it works better if you do lots of little pieces, and that way the die can run more easily off. All right, well, this is, this is what I wanted to see, is how would it work. But I think I will wrap this one up, get another one, and let's, I'll just let this, oh, wow, now that I'm squishing it up, the color's coming through pretty good. So I'll put that over there. And... Bring another piece over here. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to start dry and just tear them up and drop them on. Okay, so I don't have any, huh, well, I think when it's big pieces like that, it just doesn't let the die loose as good. I'm not sure. I, I will have to investigate that because I know the last time that I did a bunch of little pieces, it did beautifully. So I thought, what if I did large strips and tried to get a so-called landscape look? That would be wonderful because I'm always looking to do landscapes. But let's try this. Let's see what happens with this. And I'm going to still try the same kind of look, but by tearing it, see how it does. But there is one side that has the die put on, but I must not have looked at it as good. But I know my fingers are plenty dyed. Okay, so if I put the blue up here... Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, so now I have that. Then I'll take off some of this blue.
All right, now, then I'm going to try some of these sunset colors. Let's see what we can do with these. Mm, come on. Boy, it's very fine. It sticks together a lot. These are really beautiful colors. So there's a fuchsia and red and orange and yellow and just beautiful. Okay. All right. And then go back to my green... And then a little bit lighter green. And a little bit lighter. So this is where I'm trying to kind of do the same thing. But let's see if it works a little better this time. The problem with tearing it together is it's hard to get the tissue papers apart. So, okay. All right, so now with this, let me see what happens. Okay, let's just see what happens. You have to be careful when you spray them down because you don't want to blow them away. With this one, I'm going to see if I can carefully fold it like this. Wow, it's coming through the, the fabric. Pretty. So I think that I'm going to fold this back together <clears throat> let that kind of sit for a moment Let's see what happened to the first piece. <clears throat> I 
it's mostly given up. You can see it starts to get clear looking when it's given up the color. I think you could try to do a landscape, but honestly, I think that it's a little tricky using it to try to get a regular pattern. I think it would take a lot of practice, a lot of work. But what I would do is come back in and add some more tissue so that it's all filled in. And then heat set it really good. And then I think, you know, and then once you've heat set it, try to see if you can wash the color out. If the color stays, then you can use it as a batik or use it as a marble. So I think using the big pieces is a little iffy. I think it's probably a little better to use small pieces. And, but what a great way to play with color and dye and not have a big mess on your hands. I wonder if you soaked it with salt water afterwards, would that work in helping to set the dyes? Because that's going to be my next stage is how color fast can I make it? So now I'm going to roll it back up. I like the booking it because I think it helps share the dye. You know, it lets the dye run between the different layers. Let's check this one again. Luckily, since we're staying at home, I don't have to worry about my hands. I think this is right pretty. What I was trying to do is a grassy area, maybe a sunset in the sky. But I think I will keep playing with this. Put some more in here. And... I like it. I think some of these greens, I love the modeling. I think it'll make a really good, like, leafy canopy. I like all that mod modeling. So I think it has some promise. And I just did a little bit a couple weeks ago with y'all, and I thought, you know, I'd like to do some more of that dyeing. Now, this, I might not want to fold this over. I don't want the red to go down to the green. So I'm just going to leave that folded like that. All right. Well, that was fun. And like I say, how easy is that to do dyeing on fabric? Remember, if you don't have prepared for dye fabric, you need to wash it and get out any sizing on it that would keep the dyes from sinking into the fabric because regular white fabric you buy has that sizing and it's just that much harder to get really deep rich color so i love this this is a sunbeam lamp i was given it at the myrtle beach quilt party and it's really great look how easy you have three levels of light and it has a little like transformer that plugs in. I mean, how easy. You could plug it into a computer. It has a USB port on it. So, okay. So anyway, what do you think? It is a tissue paper that comes, it's called a bleeding tissue paper, which sounds a little gruesome. <laughs> but what fun is that? I can sit in here in my nice clothes and just sit and play with fabric. So just remember to keep your to wash your fabric really good and dry it. And then you can get the sizing off so you get the best color concentration you can. I might put a little salt in a wash. Well, I need to heat it first. I need to heat it. And then maybe I can wash it with salt. Salt kind of can help stabilize color. 
So when I used to work at the museum, I used to use lots of good old table salt or kosher salt to put in with the laundry to kind of help retain the, the, the dyes we put in. So, and it's, it. oh, let me show you the tissue paper again, because it's not just any tissue paper. It is Spectra, it's called Bleeding Art Tissue, Spectra Art Tissue. And it comes in a pack like this, and I got mine, 25 assorted colors, 100 sheets, and it was like $10 to $15, somewhere in that range. I got it from Amazon, and what a great project to work on with youngsters, because you just get them to cut or tear tissue paper, they can practice their cutting skills, and you just lay it on the paper, and then they can carefully use a spray bottle wet it and if they touch it they'll get colored hands but that's part of the fun too isn't it so anyway but i just thought i would show you that bleeding art tissue paper one of the fun things that's out there for us to play with i love it because you know when i do it when i set up to do actual dyeing it's a day-long process this is quick and easy and i'll heat set the colors and see what i get Oh, thank you. This blouse I've had for a good awful while, a good long while, but thank you, sweetie. But what fun that was. Now, I think I have some pictures to show you. Does anybody have any questions? Anything, anything going on? How? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And as it sits here, they're getting deeper and deeper. Isn't that fun? I mean, that's pretty cool. So, um, Mark took a couple pictures I wanted to show you real quickly. Um, we're all, you know, part of this whole COVID thing. And um, so, Mark went to Walmart neighborhood grocery yesterday. We said... Let's write a serious list because we hadn't been to the store in a couple weeks and we were getting a little concerned about toilet paper, although we weren't ready to run out. But, you know, you get a little nervous, you know. And uh, so I looked up and if you go to the Walmart neighborhood grocery stores and pick your store, you can check what's in stock. And, you know, I don't know if it's absolutely accurate. It said they had Scott tissue and they didn't. We got Cottonelle. But. You know, we got some toilet paper. So um, he got two packs and said, that'll do us, you know. But anyway, let me show you something. So we found out that we found out that our city was doing a light display off of Highway 52, which runs near downtown. And it was to support... The, um, hold on just one second. Okay. Wanted to make sure I wasn't showing the, okay, here we go. So they were using purple lights to display a thank you for all the, all the essential workers that are keeping our world going. So I ordered from 1,000 bulbs. I ordered four strands of purple lights and made a purple flag to thank all of the essential workers who are keeping us going. We're very, very thankful to them. So at night, the purple lights glow. And I mean, it's not much, but I wanted to do something. So that's what we're trying. Okay. Now, let me go to the folders, and I probably don't have everything. I hadn't even been on the computer this morning to check and see if any of you had sent me things. So, here is Akko was working on her Jenny Beyer Stellaris quilt. She does it all by hand. Beautiful work. She is learning, teaching herself to tat during this COVID crisis. 
She had some snow just two weeks ago. Here are her beautiful tools. I found out what this little tool right here is. It is something you use to gauge the spacing of the little loops in your tatting. So she has two shuttles there and that wonderful center thing. I mean, I just love it. I, I wonder how difficult it is. Akko is so talented, and she can make things look easy, and I'm not always sure it's going to be that easy. <laughs> this, oh, who is this from? This is somebody's drawing of their undersea. I have it down as Adele, but I didn't think it was Adele's. But Annette Parsons recently joined our group, and she has some great quilts on here. So I want to show you those. Wonderful, wonderful quilts. I love this frog quilt. Oh, how cute. A chickadee Christmas quilt. And look at that. I love stars. Any stars are great. All right. Let me see who else. Cheryl Lemon did such a wonderful job of her undersea quilt. It is now complete. And I am thrilled thrilled to see it. Great work. I mean, just how beautiful is that? Way to go, Miss Cheryl. Cheryl also won our last raffle contest, so she has already has now her gift certificate. All right, this is a quilt. I'm, I don't remember what Diane said about this, whether it's a customer quilt or her quilt. Here is, I'll show you another one. She's got another one. Oh, I haven't emptied. She's been making so many masks. Oh, and here we go. This is, she has been doing the Edita Sitar um, quilt along, block along quilt during this COVID crisis. And she has been getting so much done. So that's going to be the border. And more masks. She has been just an angel at doing the masks. Her beautiful farm in Texas. And here it is. She has gotten all of the blocks. Now she's just working on the border. We swear she does not sleep. And there's her Marty. And look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Love, love, love it. So here are her borders. She's working on for it. Then she is doing an art quilt, a landscape quilt. And I do believe she's going to be making a video of her progress. So she's an excellent, excellent quilter. And I can't wait. Look at this. We'll work. We'll quilt for toilet paper. Is that cute or what? That is our Diana. She's adorable. Okay, let's see who else might have sent in some things. Um, Jody, let's see. Well, Jody finished her Bacon of the Sea quilt. Love her octopus. I mean, she just really did a beautiful job. And around her binding of this, she used yarn that looks like undersea plants. How talented. Then this is another quilt she made. That is a big, scrappy quilt, let me tell you. And then her kitty cat. Love, love, love it. Thank you, Jody. Okay, let's see. Kathleen has been working on her undersea. Let me show you her latest two. Latest two versions. So I'm just really pleased. I think that y'all are so creative, so talented, and I love that you're willing to try something different, try something new. And Patricia Fry, this is her latest version of the Undersea Quilt. I love the wreck she's got sitting there. That, that She's the only one who's done an Undersea wreck. That is awesome. And then Cheryl, she should still be here. And oh my goodness, is this the cutest? I love it. And this orange fish right here, I've got a crush on him. He is just too cute. 
So I absolutely love it. Can't wait to see how hers comes along. And if you are working on a quilt um, this coming up Thursday, I'm going to have to make it our last, and then we'll decide what is our next art or landscape quilt challenge going to be. And, you know, we don't really have deadlines, and we don't force you a love. These are Susan's gorgeous Easter eggs. Look at her window at work. Is that just love? And there's our beautiful Nikki. And there's our Susan. They had their bingo cards. Yes, we had bingo last week. And you know what? I think it was a, a hit. And we're going to do it about once a month. We'll have a bingo game. I think that will be so much fun. All right. I think that's about it for right now. Um, I'm sorry I didn't gather up any others. Just show you real quick Sonia's beautiful. She completed her Jenny Byer Stellaris, and it is exquisite. I don't know if Jenny's going to do a new one this year. I haven't heard anything so far. She might be taking a break, and I wouldn't blame her. She's had uh, a, a tough year. She lost her husband in January. So if she needs a year off, she, she needs whatever. We love our Jenny, so we're not going to push her. Oh, let me see if I can find one thing real quick. I'm not sure what this camera's doing. Hold on one second. Let me try something. Okay. Hmm. Okay, hold on one second, please. Hmm. I don't know if y'all watched the Lady Gaga special last night, but it was wonderful. Love it, love it, love it. So, let's, whoops, I almost had it. Okay, here we go. I found one other thing to show you. I told you that Mark got a drone. Well, boy, has he had fun. Let me quickly, whoops, let me show you this. Wow, oh, he is loving this little thing. He's still learning. He said he's doing a height test here. See how high he can get it up and still control it. Sorry, he's he's doing that just to test how to move it, being very careful. I love seeing the world from that height. We normally don't get to see that. But this is an amazing little thing and has such an amazing camera on it. There's Mark. And then he ha it has a button on it where you push it and it'll land. It'll land right where it started from. Isn't that cool? So I thought you might get a kick out of that. I'm trying to see, think if there's one that he has. There might be one that he has. Um, let me see. I thought he had another one that might show the little pond across the street. I'm not sure. Let's see.
Well, I'm not sure. Oh, he flew it up. This is funny. He flew it up to see the flag on the front porch. <laughs> well, I was hoping he had. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. This is a little pond across the street that we love, 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 love. Okay. I think we probably just about got it. All righty. Just thought I would show you what he's been working on because, you know, he needed, he needed something exciting to work on himself. So, okay. Let me close this out and come back to y'all so I can see what you're doing. So anyway, I think, I think it's about it. Oh, it's a sweet little area. It's an older area in Winston-Salem, and we love it. It's a really sweet area. So, and with everything greening up right now, how exciting. But, yeah, the pond, it, it, it is a nice pond. In fact, I need to do some more walking. I was going to every day take a nice walk. And, oh, that didn't last long. <laughs> And we really need to because we sit too much. But anyway, well, guys, anything going on with y'all that you want to talk about? Anything? But Mark got all the groceries. He wore his mask I made him, and he wore his gloves. He went at 7 a.m. as soon as they opened so that he hoped that he would avoid crowds. He got almost everything on the list, so the supply is doing pretty good. And he came home and took everything out of the bags, threw the bags away, washed his hands really good. It, it was worrisome. He didn't even want me near any of it because didn't want to take a chance. But I tell you what, we're real pleased. Everybody's been doing such a good job around here that we now are getting very few new cases. So if everybody's doing such a wonderful job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to beat this, and um, we're all going to come out of it fine before you know it. You know, things are all things are going to be a little different for a while, but I'm so proud of everyone for following these guidelines and trying to minimize the risk as much as you can. We've never had anything like this that we've gone through, and you, you have done a beautiful job. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for sharing your artwork with us, things you're doing during this time. Feel free to send me photos to our time to quilt at twc.com. I love seeing your photos, what you're working on. And uh, stay safe. Take good care of yourself. Try something a little different. Try to find, in fact, maybe next week we'll do some crayon drawing. Everybody has crayons sitting around, don't you? Bring your flosses, any, any kind of um, embroidery floss, and a pack of crayons next week. And I'm going to show you how to color a quilt with crayons. All right. Take good care of yourself. Oh, Mark is a doll baby. And, yep, thank you for being so good. Take your time getting back out. Tanya, oh, I would love to see the china cabinet you painted. You are so talented that way, and it's so good to see you. Well, take good care of yourselves. I'll see you Thursday night when hopefully I have that done. And uh, if you ever want to try a starter pack of Dynaflow, Jacquard Dynaflow or Jacquard Lumiere, I highly recommend it. I mean, now it's got me thinking of all kinds of fun things to do. And what it's a way of combining quilting, painting, and coloring all in one. It can't be better. Adele, there you are, sweetie. It is so good to see you. Thursday at 7.30 Eastern Time, 7.30 New York Time, we'll be working and I should have that done. I have promised myself to get it done. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> Look at that. We'll see how long it takes to come off, right? <laughs> All right. Hey, I always said I had a green thumb. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all. And I will see you Thursday and then next Sunday again. And I'll try to have some really interesting things for you to do. So don't forget, find your crayons and an inexpensive scrap of fabric and any few DMC flosses. Okay? We're going to work on something new next week. All right, everybody. Take good care. Stay safe. Y'all are the best. All right. Send me your photos. Take good care. Bye-bye, guys. You're the best. You're the best. Take good care of yourselves. You all mean so much to me. Take care. Mm -hmm.